I'm involved in the diagnosis and treatment of all general gastrointestinal disorders, including upper and lower GI tract disease, liver, and pancreatic diseases. One of the most common disorders I encounter is gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD. Most patients who have GERD present with symptoms such as heartburn, regurgitation, and or chest pain. Repetitive injury to the esophagus from stomach acids can lead to complications related to GERD. These complications can include things such as esophagitis or inflammation of the lining of the esophagus, esophageal strictures or narrowing of the esophagus, or a condition known as Barrett's esophagus. I'm going to focus my discussion on Barrett's esophagus today because this is a very important complication related to reflux. In Barrett's esophagus, the lining of the esophagus changes from a more normal esophageal tissue to an intestinal type of tissue. This change increases a person's risk for esophageal cancers. Any patient who has chronic reflux or persistent reflux despite treatment or any person who has alarm symptoms associated with reflux, such as dysphagia, which means difficulty swallowing, bleeding, or weight loss, should undergo an upper endoscopy or an EGD. In this procedure, a patient is sedated and a small flexible tube with a lightning camera at the end of it is inserted into the patient's mouth. It is directed down through the esophagus into the stomach into this middle portion of the small intestine. During this procedure, the lining of the upper GI tract can be evaluated and biopsies can be obtained. During this procedure, Barrett's esophagus can be diagnosed. A patient diagnosed with Barrett's esophagus undergoes treatment basically to control reflux symptoms. The mainstay of treatment includes both dietary modifications as well as medical therapy. Proton pump inhibitors are the main class of drugs used to treat GERD-related Barrett's esophagus. Drugs such as Prilosec and Omeprazole are two of the many drugs in this class, which lower acid levels and promote healing and control of symptoms. Any patient who has Barrett's esophagus will undergo repeated periodic upper endoscopies to look for abnormal or precancerous tissue changes. These precancerous changes or dysplasia are very important to be diagnosed because patients who develop a condition called high-grade dysplasia are at significant risk to progress on to esophageal cancer. In fact, patients in the past who had been diagnosed with high-grade dysplasia related to Barrett's esophagus were advised to undergo an esophagectomy or a surgical procedure to remove the esophagus. Now, however, other procedures are available to treat high-grade dysplasia in Barrett's esophagus. One such procedure, the HALO procedure, or HALO ablation technique, uses heat energy applied directly to the abnormal tissue. This eradicates the tissue and allows for regrowth of normal tissue. Studies have shown that eradication of abnormal Barrett's esophagus is successful in 90% of the patients. This procedure is done during a routine upper endoscopy in an outpatient setting. Post-procedure, some patients may find some mild chest discomfort or difficulty swallowing, but these are usually controlled easily with medical therapy. Approximately two months after the ablation, a repeat endoscopy is used to assess for any residual Barrett's tissue. If there is any tissue found, a repeat ablation will be performed. I currently am performing the HALO ablation technique for my patients who have Barrett's esophagus with high-grade dysplasia. I encourage all patients who have chronic gastroesophageal reflux disease to see their physician and assess their risk for any complications related to reflux.